Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're at Knife River Indian Village and behind me is a reconstructed earthen lodge uh, that were in about five different villages in this area. So let's go and have a look. We are on the way. So the lodges were constructed on a uh, wooden frame and then packed with mud around the outside. Now these lodges would typically last for about 10 years before they would need to be replaced. So let's head on in. Oh, oh sorry, where are you? Oh, it's a doorbell. That's interesting. All right, so generally on the right hand side just as you came in was where the horses were kept as you can see there's the rails there to keep the horses from wandering around into the rest of the um, in lodge there was beds positioned around the outside all the way around a medicine person would usually be over in the far corner around back there the central area was the cooking area and above the cooking area was a uh, skylight to let the smoke out now in bad weather they could put an upside down um, buffalo hide boat over the top of that which would still allow the smoke to get out uh, but wouldn't let the rain or snow come in now during spring they would plant corn beans, uh, squash and sunflowers and they would alternate the rows so you'd have corn and, um, and squash, uh, corn beans and then you know the sunflowers and things like that so not all corn in one area it was separated out. Now the women would do this they'd use um, like uh, horns and antlers or the shoulder blades of buffaloes to break up the soil and, and plant this so and then uh, they would harvest twice, so they'd harvest the green corn, uh, which was um, uh, not all of it obviously, they'd ha harvest some of the green corn, and then once the corn was ripe they would harvest the rest of the yellow corn. And they would dig these huge um, uh, deposits into the ground where they could store the excess uh, through the winter months. Now the women would um, have these stands built like this and they would sit up on top of these and they would sing to the um, uh, to the fields because they felt that the, uh, the all of the plants and things like that were uh, had their own spirits and ho had their own um, uh, souls so to speak so they would be singing to the um, the, the fields so and they'd sit up in here and do that so across this area is one of the where one of the villages was. It's it's a little bit difficult to make out, but basically you have these little uh, raised spots. That's where the earthen lodges have collapsed and left these little mounds. And then on the very edges, which is like through here, these are the middens. So the middens sort of surround the area that the village was situated in and then the other little mounds in the field is where all of the earthen lodges have collapsed in on themselves. So the position I'm in now is in the center of one of the uh, one of the houses and um, Janie is actually standing on the edge where the uh, the walls have collapsed. So it would be easily five or six or seven meters across it may be easier to to see this one this one's probably a similar size it runs from about there and runs around in a circle to just where Janie is and then back towards me here 
Alright, so basically I walk around the edge of the, the, the lodge. So this is the back wall. As you can see, it's quite a big area. You could probably fit maybe 20 or so people within that area. Now this is the Knife River. And it flows down to the Missouri and joins the Missouri. So they would also, they would fish these um, waters and up until about um, the late 1700s they would be using traditional methods for doing the fishing after that metal fish hooks were introduced by trade with the Europeans but one of the other things they used to do is they would create fish traps now the fish trap was basically a reed um, arrangement which would go in a semicircle and then stop so the fish would swim in and then they wouldn't be able to find their way out so just an ingenious another method for catching fish. Additionally, before they would do any of their fishing, they would have the elders and women say prayers. Well, yeah, prayers. Uh, they would they would have the uh, older persons and women say prayers to help with the, the fish hunt. So there were five settlements here, basically made up of three different tribes. And for the life of me, I can't remember what those names are, and I'll try and stick them up in here somewhere when, when I'm doing the editing. Um, now, there was approximately uh, 400 people. Now, because this area was so close to the Missouri River, then the, um, the influence of Europeans impacted the villages. Um, they were struck with smallpox uh, twice um, and this was of course introduced by European people and as time went forward and Lewis and Clark expanded the uh, United States out to the west with their maps uh, the way of life for the uh, indigenous people in this area was slowly absorbed into the European way of life and that was the end of the native way of, of living. All right, guys, there's a lovely uh, little um, uh, tour, tourist center at the site where you can go and watch a little movie, uh, have a look at some of the historical things that are in there. Well worth going in and spending a little bit of time for that. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time, guys.